this is Dr. L, and let's talk a little bit about um, what are called hydrophobic interactions, which are really important chemical interactions in biochemistry. Hydrophobic, hydrophobic interactions is when nonpolar molecules or areas of large molecules that are nonpolar do not form hydrogen bonds with water, and so instead they tend to clump together in what is called a hydrophobic interaction. So here we've got like some molecule in orange and it's in a water solution and the water molecules, some individual ones are shown in blue around these orange larger hydrophobic molecules. And so what will happen is because these orange molecules consist largely of nonpolar covalent bonds, so there's no areas of partial charge, then you won't get hydrogen bonding between the water molecules and these orange molecules. You will not. They'll just sort of ignore each other. And so because there's no hydrogen bonding there, and because the water molecules are hydrogen bonding with one another, that will in net tend to drive these two nonpolar molecules together. And so they will interact in the absence of interacting with these water molecules. And that interaction is called a hydrophobic interaction. It's kind of this tendency for hydrophobic things, nonpolar things, nonpolar molecules or regions of molecules to clump together and push the water apart. And this is why when you mix oil and water together, they will separate. That's a hydrophobic interaction that you can see in your kitchen, no problem at all. Examples in biology, if you see water beading on any sort of surface, what it's showing you is that the surface is somewhat hydrophobic. It means there's a lot of nonpolar covalent bonds down here in this chemistry, and the water is not hydrogen bonding with this. So instead the water's clumping together, away and separate from whatever is making up this leaf surface. You also see this when you zoom in on protein structure. So proteins are made out of amino acids. Amino acids are connected together through covalent bonds called peptide bonds. This like uh, gray string is like a, a bunch of amino acids like stretch, you know, stuck together into a peptide, which is like the, the level right before a protein. And there are different chemical areas on this macromolecule. Some are hydrophilic and some are hydrophobic. And what will happen is the hydrophilic areas will tend to interact through hydrogen bonding with water, driving the hydrophobic areas together. And so these are forming hydrophobic interactions and these are hydrogen bonding with water in the environment. There's always water around in living things. A place where both these types of interactions, both hydrophobic interactions and hydrogen bonding really interact, really matter, are in what are called phospholipid bilayers, which is what a cell membrane is made out of. Cell membranes, which wrap up each cell, are made of these molecules called phospholipids. And here's one phospholipid, this gray ball and these two tails, that's one phospholipid and it's right beside a row of them, and they're sort of opposite another row. So this is a bilayer, and they're oriented this way because these little heads, which are called phosphate heads, they have polar covalent bonds. They have areas of partial charge. In a watery environment, there'll be water molecules out here, and there's a ton of hydrogen bonding happening. In contrast, the little stringy tails, which are called fatty acid tails, consist largely of hydrophobic, or sorry, uh, nonpolar covalent bonds. So they're very hydrophobic. They don't like water. They don't interact with water. They don't hydrogen bonds. So they will clump together because they're not hydrogen bonding with the water that's out here on the outside of the cell or the water that's in here on the inside of the cell. And so this combination of hydrogen bonding, which are, is a type of electrostatic interaction, and then hydrophobic interactions is what causes phospholipid bilayers, which are membranes, to form. And they do that spontaneously. Nothing has to make them do that. It's their chemical nature. And that's enough about hydrophobic interactions for now.